Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. New intro. New <laughs> intro. Okay, I got it now. I'm on it. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Romance at a Glance. Starting off with a chuckle from Shani because. I am so crazy, and this is the third intro I've done because, you guys, it's just been that kind of day. That kind of day. But now I'm here with Shawnee, and I am so excited because we both already voted early. We hope that you also have voted early, and whether you did that by mail or in person, or you dropped off a ballot in person at a drop-off box, that's what I did, I salute you, get out, get that vote counted. Every vote matters. doesn't matter who you're voting for. But it does matter that you vote. So make sure you exercise that right and you get out there, make a plan, and do it early. And actually, I'm working on a fun, fun project right now. If you like sports and or live near a stadium, you can vote at a stadium or an arena. Like, you could go into the forum and vote in the middle of the forum floor. Like, that's pretty chill. That's awesome. Yeah. So go out, go vote. Be like LeBron. (laughs) Be like LeBron. (laughs) And T.I. And T.I. And Timothy Chalamet. Ooh. Timothy Ziegler. Ooh, shit. Will They're... Ferrell. I don't even know. <laughs> no. well, actually, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. I, Ferrell. I mean, he did vote, but. <laughs> it's not as sexy. It's not as sexy. Not as sexy. Mean, the it's... Avengers. He doesn't have the kind of humor that. Chris Evans. Chris Evans, yes, yes. We're back. We're back on the train. We're back on the train. <laughs> I say go vote, um, mostly because I vote out of principle, at at its core. So many people died, got hosed, uh, were not allowed to vote, were suppressed in order for us to have the right to vote. It's important to us. So go vote. Just Mm -hmm. out of principle. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's just your principle. I don't care who you vote for. I'm not going to check your ballot. I'm not going to check your ballot. Just, Just go and get the sticker. I want to see your sticker. Yeah. (laughs) Get the sticker. If you go on Instagram and you have a sticker, tag us in it. We're happy to reshare you. Yes. We want to promote the voting. We love the voting. Of course, I didn't take a... Oh, wait. I did maybe take a picture of myself voting. I think I do have a picture of my photo of me with my voting sticker. I don't know if I posted it yet. I want to see your sticker. I'm going to post it. Plus, I'll do anything for a sticker. I'll do anything (laughs) for a sticker. If you guys want stickers, you can write us a review. Write us a review. We have stickers. I made stickers. They're so cute. They're super cute. And I will send them to you if you write us a review. And what do they got to do, Bridget? They got to tell us. Yeah, tell us. Write a review. If you have a book in mind that you want us to do, pop it in that review. Yes. And also let us know on Instagram that you wrote a review. And we are happy to send you some stickers. Obviously, you'll have to DM us. Get in those DMs. Slide right in. Slide right in. Give us that Addy. Give us that that Addy. You know what I'm saying? Can I get your Your digits, digits, girl? (laughs) Can I get your digits? (laughs) And yeah. And uh, I'll get that right to you. This is a crazy, crazy time in 2020 that we've all been having. And we hope that you are having fun listening to us we are always aspiring to be a place of happiness and laughter and nastiness nastiness <laughs> and, and just a place just you like can a, ty- a place you can go and let for it an all hour hang out, you can man. just let your mind wander and yes. giggle with us and laugh at all the stupid shit that i say <laughs> and you know get inspired by shawnee's life lessons that she's always dropping in this and maybe you're learning about kink along the journey with shawnee and me I hope so. maybe you're learning about books and our story preferences maybe you're just here because i say welcome to pound town <laughs> take me to pound town pound town <laughs> but we hope that you are you know we're a little bit of stress relief in your day and that you're having fun with us absolutely you want to have fun doing paranormal today bridget yeah you know i always want to have fun doing paranormal Shani. <laughs> me too man. i like it I when like it's it. normal I but like i like it a lot when it's paranormal <laughs> <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> I wish y'all could have seen Bridget's little shimmy shake she just did. <laughs> All right, Bridget, you ready to get popping? I'm ready. Let's get Shades of Wicked. Pop a popping. Popping. Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say now? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. It's all right, guys, we are reading Shades of Wicked by Janine Frost today. It is book numero uno of the Night Rebel series. I would like to tell everyone that I did not realize that this book was a part of a previous series or the main character, Ian, was heavily a part of it. I thought he was like a side side character where he was like mentioned, but not incredibly pivotal to every plot. And <laughs> yes. then upon reading this book, I was like, okay. 
He, it turns out, was incredibly pivotal to a lot of these books. (laughs) And it probably would have been nice to have read those first. However, I did not know that, and so we did not. Because I was like, ooh, Master Vampire Ian and a thousands of years old huntress who's like a warden and she's like in charge. This is from the description. I was yeah. like, uh, yes, please. When when I saw yes. Master Vampire, yeah. I was like, yes. Yeah. And like a lawmaker. And I was like, I see what you're doing, Veritas. I love so anyways, the description got me. The book got me. I wanted to read in Janine Frost. It was heavily recommended. I was yes. very excited. Uh, however, me and Shawnee went into this book just to clarify our reviews with no prior reading of her series before this that he is a feature of. Yes. And I did not know, even though like it's a series, I did not know that the story of them doesn't end with book one. So going Mm -hmm. on to book two is still about these same characters. Yes. So it's left with a cliffhanger. Yes. Which I I did not know either. Did not know. It was was not prepared prepared for. (laughs) Not prepared. (laughs) And so like a long time ago, I made it like a point. I was not going to like read books that like, (laughs) well, one, the series isn't finished yet. Um, I don't know if this series is finished, but in general, if a series isn't finished yet, I won't even read book one. Mm -hmm. That's like a, Hard, you know. Rule. I know because I really want to read Mary Gentry. If anyone out there is a Mary Gentry fan by Laurel K. Hamilton, she still hasn't finished. She it. hasn't finished. It's it. been fucking forever, uh. and she and I understand why she didn't. Like she's been changing the publishers change and her editor change, and like there's a lot of things like going on behind the scenes. And she says it takes her longer to write. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't care about your problems. <laughs> write me the book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about your real life writer struggles. Man, I bet you she'd drop that on Patreon. She'd have a shit ton of patrons. I would pay for it. it I like, would pay for it twice. So pay for it on Patreon. I'd pay for it on hardcover. Hardcover. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> want the end of that story. Although the last book was very disappointing, which is another reason she took a break because it like she, she was said like she, a, you know she what, wasn't happy with it. <laughs> yeah, I think she either ran out of story or the publisher and her were like having some back and forth or something was yeah, going yeah. on, but She's like, yeah, I didn't like what happened, and I, I needed like I to would, take a break. I feel and like I, was I would like, rewrite a book that I hated. I'd be like, you know what, guys? Yeah. My bad. Do over. Get the <laughs> ebook because I updated it quite a bit. <laughs> quite, a, quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like that. I, I I would hate the idea of knowing my book was like just not the way I wanted it, and it just being out there. Yeah. I know that would irk me. I've have I have songs. I have songs like that where like I have pulled them off the internet. <laughs> Because I was like, you know, I have older videos and shit that I pulled off the internet for sure. For sure. I pulled off a lot of old music videos and stuff like that. Like, because I was just like, you know, just get better too over time. They do. Like, the more you do it, you're like getting better and better. You're learning new techniques. You're working with better, like, more cameras, more editing stuff, more whatever. And then you look at the beginning stuff and you're like, like, oh, I was doing so so cute. cute. (laughs) Look at me. Look at those graphics. Look at me trying. Oh, look at that. Was that a crossfade? Look at that. Look at that crossfade. Did you fade to bed, babe? Oh, my God. All right. Okay. Well, getting back to this book, you guys, before we get into the narrator and everything, I do want to do a quick content warnings that both characters have rape and abuse in the past. Um, there is a freeing of a captive blood slave, not a human, um, or but a blood slave, nevertheless. Um, actually, not even like a vampire or anything. It's like a, cr- a creature, one yeah. might say. And there's obviously violence. There's the main characters fight each other. And also, there is a very healthy dose of parental neglect. (laughs) And I just wanted to quickly tell you about the content warnings before Shani gives us a quick narrator audible. Tell us. This is your audible. (laughs) Oh, my God. I love it. Let's come up with a catchphrase. You guys, on air. It's happening right now. An audible audible moment. And Shani's simple sounds. Shani's. Salacious sounds. Ooh, <laughs> salacious. That's a good word. Shawnee's. Okay, you guys, I'm going to need help. Obviously, I've gone through like 30 and Shawnee has not agreed on one yet. So, please, on Instagram, we need to know what Shawnee's little audible moment can be called. Please. I know you guys have some creativity in those little noggins. I'm going to post about it and then you can comment and let me know. This is Shawnee's narrator spotlight. That I like that. I like it. It's, it's simple. She already chose you guys and I'm not thrilled, but we're going to continue on with Shawnee's. Okay. Narrator spotlight. Fine. Instagram, hit us up. <laughs> I just to know. Narrator spotlight is cute. Welcome to Shawnee's narrator spotlight. You're going to have to make a jingle for that. Narrator spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because you made a jingle for my my sassy oh, quotes yeah. or whatever. Oh yeah, I gotta remember. I don't even remember what the fuck. I, I just made that shit on the spot. I can't. I can't be expected to remember things I say. <laughs> <laughs> it was last week. <laughs> I don't remember. Week too long. <laughs> to, to be fair, I don't remember I don't what remember. I, I just remember loving it. It was like Bridget Smutty Corner. <laughs> <laughs> something, <laughs> something, something like that. Uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> And welcome to Shawnee's Narrator Spotlight. Let me tell you right now, this was a good narrator. Tavia Gilbert, she really nailed it. Now, there were a few times when I couldn't tell exactly who was talking, but I just felt like there was a lot of people talking sometimes. So I still liked her. I recommend her. I say go with it, go with the flow, and rewind if you don't know who the fuck's talking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. That's been Shawnee's Narrator Spotlight. Ooh. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Well, in case you need a quick catch up on the book, we have a master vampire, Ian. You guys, this man likes the fuck, and he is uh-huh. good at it, and he knows he's good at it, and he knows everybody wants him, and he thinks they should. And he's like, yeah, obviously they want me, because look at me. And he had a dick piercing. I'm, yeah, and he has a silver dick piercing, yes. which is trace erotic for a vampire. Super. And I don't feel like that got enough play in the book after she mentioned it at the beginning. I was like, shouldn't this be a bigger sex plot point? Yeah. But that is for later, because I'm in the synopsis right now. Oh, my bad, my bad, my <laughs> okay? bad, my bad. Synopsis me, synopsis me. Okay. So basically, he has lots of enemies, and we find out during the book what happened. But he basically sells his soul to a demon named Dagon. Dagon? Dagon. 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 And this demon now has claim to a soul if he dies. So, and he has in like a year or something. like He's like a year left or something. And his only chance to escape comes when Veritas, who is a thousands and thousands and thousands of year old vampire, plus a little something extra, which it takes a while in the book for us to find out what, she is part of like the... The supernatural police, basically. Yeah, the law and guardians. The law guardians. Yeah. And she basically goes to him because she has an axe to grind with Dagon and wants to kill him. And she knows that she can use Ian to find him and trap him. And then, of course, she falls in love with him. I'll be, because this is a romance I'll novel. Be. And it turns out that she is not quite the uptight law guardian everyone thinks, and that for thousands of years she's been using her position to actually protect poor little innocent fey creatures and vampires and other beings who are wrongfully accused. And she actually saves his best friend's daughter from the headman. Headman? Headman? Headman. Head chopper offer? Yeah. And Ian thinks that she actually allowed the execution to go through, but it was a little changeling and she knew it. And so it turns out that she's so good. So she's good. So good. And of course, he falls in love with her also because she's so he good. gets glimpses underneath the so good to he the sees, lady underneath. He sees the she's real She's like an her. onion. She's like an onion and he peels her. <laughs> then she cries. And then she cries. <laughs> And that's really the uh, that's really the old synops. That's a pretty good synops, Bridge. Thank you. I do think that we should start with the cock ring, though. Yeah. Because we've already mentioned it, and it would be unfair to make people wait for us to talk about it. Oh, no, let's talk about the cock ring. So I was intrigued. Mm-hmm. I have never had sex with someone with a cock ring before. Ooh. And so I was like, intriguing. Tell me more about how this is going to feel. I wanted to know, does it feel better inside of you? Do you even feel it inside of you? Do you feel it like, oh, if he's like rubbing his like dick on you, but like outside, then the cock ring is there. So it's like maybe a little extra sizzle, yeah. a little extra pressure or something like mm-hmm. that. What if you're giving a blowjob? What's that like? I wanted to know the things, Shawnee. Yeah. And I did not get to know the things. No. It was, I don't even think it was mentioned again. Maybe once, but maybe, I don't think it was like a yeah. part of the sex. It was just like. His dick was out and there was a ring and she saw it or something. Yeah, that that's pretty much what happened. And I was with you because I thought when they said that he had the cock ring and it was silver. So like So it's gonna burn so him. It's gonna and burn her, him and, and her. I was like, ooh. And then like they like a little they like pain they when like they pain. fuck. Yeah. So I thought for sure this is gonna come into play. And I thought oh, yeah, how I didn't fucking even think about the silver inside of her. Inside of her. That but, should have been but painful Bridget, for her. What would have been even better is if she was giving him a blowjob. <sighs> you know when you're just playing with the tip of your tongue with the yeah, tip of the dick? Yeah. Like 
that was burning her as she was giving him the blowjob, but it's just a little bit of pain. It's not a whole Ooh. lot because it's only a little bit of silver, Ooh. but that could have enhanced some things. Yes. And I thought there was a little bit left on the table. I think so. When it came to that. Because the sex in this book was very descriptive. Very descriptive. Very yes. descriptive. But and I they did... were making a lot of messes. <laughs> okay. I put that in my notes for later, but I want, I think now is a perfect time to jump in. You cannot sustain an immortal relationship if you cannot fuck without ruining the entire house. The entire house. I mean, they were just like, oh, I swept shit off the desk onto the floor and broke a lamp. They were like breaking staircases concrete. and breaking concrete <laughs> and breaking a club. And I was like, what is happening? How can an immortal get through thousands of years of life if they can't like temper their own like they can't just like live yeah that made no sense to me it made no sense it took away from it a lot for me because yeah. i was just like rolling my eyes a little bit where i was like oh god here they go especially They're gonna break. when they were supposed to be kind of incognito at that place yeah. like hey you guys don't we're see hiding us. out let me just wreck this beach house yeah i was like get the fuck out of here <laughs> get the fuck out of here honestly he took it out because the sex was very descriptive and i was like i feel like every time i was like getting into it and he was like yeah talking to her real dirty and telling her what he was gonna do with mm-hmm. her and she was gonna like in. He was gonna like hold her down, and she could just let go, and she he could go. take the pain, and yeah. he wanted the pain, and like she could scratch his back as much as she wanted to. I was like, oh hell's yes! And then she like would like throw him into a wall and break it, and I was like, that what is going on? <laughs> Part of me thought that that is like you know new relationship energy type of sex you know no, but like no. in a couple months they're gonna but they're gonna boil down to like the you know missionary doggy style you know regular <laughs> ass I don't think so because he was like she finds him at the beginning of the book in an orgy like a planned out like circus, circus orgy, orgy with like fire rings <laughs> that people are supposed to dive through but like how did he fuck all those people without breaking furniture you know what I'm saying like they're yeah. all immortal people it's like it doesn't make any sense to me or maybe they were humans I don't know but even so I'm like yeah Th- th- that whole aspect I, I appreciate the like so I was totally down for the she is it turns out half a vampire and half her dad is like a god demigod yeah. they don't really ever clearly define what he is but he is the grim reaper the grim reaper or one of the grim or reapers or one of the grim reapers yeah um, and so she has a lot of extra powers and a lot of extra strength and she's just like Thousands and thousands of years old. Yes. And he's like hundreds of years old. And I, so I appreciate the fact that she has hurt all of her previous lovers by like, let's say, scratching their back too hard. Or maybe like I was I was imagining that like instead of breaking furniture, like she's grabbing on his arm too hard and breaks it. Yeah. Or she's like gripping his like rips his back open and he's bleeding and then she like licks it better. Or she's like, you know, like pushing the lungs out of his air, not that he needs to breathe or something like that. You know, but like, and and he's like, oh, I like pain, so this is good, a good mix for us, because I want you to scratch my back, because that heightens it for me. Yeah. But the breaking stuff, I just couldn't get behind. Couldn't get behind it, Johnny. It was it was a, a lot. I can think about it. You could never have like, oh, let's have a quick quickie in the bathroom. Oh, we're gonna wreck our whole friend's bathroom. <laughs> like, at no point did they fuck in this book without destroying yeah. shit. Everybody knows that, like, because like even like in kink. Yes, I'd love to play every time, but it's not feasible. And, and we're not breaking anything. It's just not. You got work to do. You got things to do. Th- stuff's got to happen. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to bend somebody over, just pop it in it from the back, get yeah. a little quickie action. Yeah. Nothing gets broken. Yeah. Or very little does. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. But they didn't have any just like. They didn't have any like, there was no variety. Yeah. It was just like. They were just going to real pound town. Like real the, pound. Like the capital. Pound town. The capital of pound town. Yes, they were. <laughs> Capital of Pound Town. I was like, okay, this is, this is I mean, because like, there was, I, I felt like there was less, almost like less intimacy only because there was less variety. Yeah. So it felt like they were never getting to know all the different sides of each other. They were getting to know like that one side. Um, I actually yeah. found myself skimming the sex. Yeah. So that's how I know I didn't really connect right. with, yeah. with the sex. Yeah. Um, like, it was written really hot, like like theoretically, like logically. My brain is like, okay, well, it was descriptive and it was this and that, but I just it yeah. it, it didn't connect for me. Yeah. Um, also, can we just talk about how, like, this is a little change of subject, but 
the whole like beginning of the story, she's like, I got secrets. I can't tell nobody. The, right. I've kept these secrets for she thousands gets drunk of for years. For one second. She gets, <laughs> she gets drunk one time where every secret is out. Just out. Oh man, this thing, this secret that could kill me or put make me so vulnerable. Yeah. You know what? I got drunk. I'm gonna tell it all. Like, I know. It fuck? wasn't like she chose to trust him. They, they, she did try to like caveat it a little bit. Like, I don't know. I've ne- I've gotten drunk before, and I've never told anyone anything. Yeah. So she did kind of like caveat it a little bit that it wasn't just the drunkenness. It was him plus the drunkenness. Yeah. But yeah, I was like, no. What? Like, she, and also the whole point of that bet was like she's like I can hold my whatever this liquor is. Yeah. And she didn't hold it. She did not hold she it. She hold threw it. up all over. She, yeah. I mean, she won. She won the bet, but, but she didn't fight. He fought and yeah. saved the thing. He didn't like. I wanted her to just be like him to be like, "Are you okay?" And she's like, "Yeah, I got this, bro. Got Back this. the fuck off." <laughs> like, it was. I don't even need you. You stand guard. <laughs> exactly. Like it was. It was a little bit weird to me because I thought she was going to be a little bit more on her game, even though she was drunk. Yeah. That's why she took the thing. But I get it. Okay, fine. She's drunk, but I didn't expect her to give up all her secrets, especially because the secrets are so detrimental to her her actual existence in life. Yeah. Right. She is hidden as a law officer when really she is basically like an underground railroad right. for you know yeah, supernatural for sure. creatures and it everything is hinging on the fact that she doesn't get found out doesn't get fired so like and like her life's her purpose life's is to help purpose. people yeah so giving that secret away is and she didn't even trust him yet at this point no like it, i don't know it was just it, yeah, there was just a whole lot. I think she gave she gave too much information too fast. Yeah, or, or whatever. And I didn't feel like it was earned yet. Yes, I when, agree. You know, and I that agree. kind of took. There was a few things that took me out of this. I felt like this book could have been like, could have been closer to a five for me, um, but there was just some things where I was like, ah, it didn't. I feel like you yeah. just missed the mark yeah. on that thing. Well, how did you think about the fact that so at the beginning she's described as being kind of waif like yeah. and kind of small, like five foot three or something like that, and um, and then she and turned not into very a- commanding presence. Yeah, and he like when he meets her is like she's gonna try and take me in, and then she starts like beating his ass, and he's like, oh whoa, like I misjudged her, okay, and I liked that he was like. I, I was fine with the fact that he's like, oh, there's something underneath you. Like, you like to fight me. Like, you want me. Like, mm-hmm. you're pretending you don't, but I can see, I feel it when we're fighting. Like, you like yeah. this. Like, and I was like, oh, that's cool because it's like a juxtaposition with what she looks like and the way, and not only the way she just like, quote unquote, looks like physically, but also his interpretation of what that means. Like, oh, she's small. She's going to be weak. Or, or she's, yeah. she's kind of like described as being, again, waif-like. So she's going to be like maybe, and she's a law like officer. So she's going to be orderly and she's going to be buttoned up and she's going to be whatever. And like him, again, peeling those onion layers <laughs> and realizing she's not that. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then she turns into, like, an Amazon yeah. with, like, a completely different hair color. Like, everything is different. Yeah. She's been, gl- like, and glamored to look yeah, like one way. Well, I don't so, know. Okay. So, and then he's like, oh, this is a real you. Like, so hot. And I'm like, yeah. what about what about the other her? Yeah. <laughs> well, that you fell Because he fell in love with the other her. Yeah. I don't know. So, okay. So, <laughs> I actually wrote about this. And I was like. Why does everybody always, like, if they're going to change, they change into, like, an ultra sexy whatever. I was like, what if she was busted? You know, like, Shrek style. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what if her real form was, like, kind of ghastly or, like, yeah. I mean, she's the Grim Reaper's, yeah. like, daughter. So yeah. what if you see your worst nightmare when you see her? What yeah. if, like, That'd be dope. you know, that would have been more interesting to me than, oh, oh okay, another oh, book a, where a she transforms into a bombshell. Right. You know, I... I I definitely thought, <laughs> definitely thought that I was like, oh, here yeah. she goes, she's a bombshell. Yeah, it would have um, been cool. That would have been really cool if she was like this kind of like waif life, and that's how she hides from showing everyone how powerful she is. And then it's the same sort of physical form, except for that she's just like gives off a real fucking scary feel. Yeah, <laughs> and so like ice like, in your veins. Yeah, type shit. <laughs> and he's like likes it because he likes the danger element. Yeah. So when she like finally lets the shields down on like all her energy and shit, he's like. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Hell oh, I'm going to dip into that. <laughs> I'm going to bathe in all that danger. <laughs> like, that would have been cool. Like, yeah, I agree with you. I, I do. It kind of reminds me of, like, she's all that, where it's like, underneath it all, she's a fucking knockout. And you're like, all right. <laughs> in, just, in this case, it was magic. She but, just took off her glasses. But yeah. you don't know. Yeah. 
I totally, uh, I, I agree with you there. Like, yeah. I guess a lot of this book to me read like a standard paranormal, mm-hmm. you know, like they're, I did like, um, a lot of their banter and yeah. stuff like that. So I think where the book shines is just in the dialogue um, and how uh, it's witty and it's funny. Yeah. And, and they and they like basically rag on each other a yeah. lot and are yeah. going back and forth. I like when she tells him to put on the, like, the latex suit or whatever mm-hmm. and he refuses to and then he finds out he has to jump into like a freezing cold waterfall. <laughs> yeah. And then he likes it because he likes pain. Yeah. And she's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You know, which was also funny because they did all that for nothing. Yeah. Because they're jumping into like a club, yeah. you know, that she went there. She was going there for information. And then she finds out like that club's been closed for like a really long time. Yeah, and like he's like 90 years. Yeah. She's, he's like, when was the last time you were here? She was like, uh, well, 90 years ago. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. He's you like, know. let's use my contacts. Yeah. <laughs> I have fun today. Today. <laughs> So I thought that was, a, a, you know, a fun thing about the book, for sure. Yeah. Oh, I think that was 100% the best part about it was the <laughs> the back and forth. And the – I did like the – it kind of in vain with that when she kept being she kept talking about his dossier because he yeah. she had like a whole you know research thing on him yeah and like everything was wrong and she's like god damn it nothing's right in here <laughs> and she's always like cursing in different like ancient languages and he's yeah. like sumerian and he like knows them all and she's like how the fuck do you know all this stuff <laughs> and he says um you know the best thing about being dismissed as an insatiable whore people don't mind their tongues around you and i was like that's so true because like yeah. when anyone for any reason dismisses you like, if you're a little kid, like, you yeah. hear all kinds of shit when you're a kid because no one yeah. pays attention to the fact that you're there. Yeah. Or when you're, whatever, thought lesser for whatever yeah. reason. Like, when I was an assistant working, yeah. I heard so much shit. <laughs> Compared to when I was, like, the producer or something, I heard a lot less because no everyone's watching what they say around yeah. me. But when you're an assistant, like, no one gives a fuck what you say. So they say some crazy. <laughs> crazy things around you. Well, I, I mean, I had this weird incident where, like, um, somebody tried to break into the house that I lived at um, with a friend of mine. And and she is, well, like a white Cuban. It's important to the story. Um, so her daughter is obviously, like, a little white Cuban, right? So I was holding her daughter. So somebody tried to break in, and the police come, and she hands me her daughter, and she's like, you know, basically, can you just hold her while I'm talking to the cops? So the cop comes in. He sees me holding the baby or whatever. He doesn't really address me in the scenario, like, you know, yeah. and he's just talking to her. And at a certain point in the thing, he says, like, oh, well, if something's happening at your house, like, this is my neighbor. Call me specifically. We don't really come to this area. And it's a Haitian area in Miami, right? And he's like, you know, if these people want to kill each other, they can just kill each other. I'm, We're not here to help them. And I'm standing there, like, right there, but I'm assuming he just thought I was, like, the nanny or right. the babysitter or something sure. else. And he was just blatant. He, Right, and when he left, uh, she and I just looked she, at she each other. She passed for white. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. She's definitely like she was a white Cuban, like, um, but like you know, like the Spain yeah, yeah, Cubans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was it was like one of those things where he left, and she and I just looked at each other. And we were just like, "Yo." He also told us if anybody comes in the house, shoot them in the head immediately. He said, "Leave only one story." He said this all in front of me. It was like I was just standing there. He was talking so to her crazy. and like. He was just like, it doesn't matter. Make sure they're dead. People wonder why people are upset with the police. It's <laughs> like, Holy like shit. maybe someone should have caught that in his training that he is blatantly racist. Blatantly racist. Not helping out that neighborhood. <laughs> maybe someone should have so caught that. So people say all sorts maybe of stuff. Maybe they should have spent some oversight. Yep. <laughs> just a smidge. A oversight. Smidge of politics in here, smidge guys. Of maybe there should have been uh, a little bit of oversight. <laughs> but That's I, all like I'm that, say. I like She's that. She's a law officer. It fits. She, it, Completely it does. Fits. She even says sometimes they're wrong. And sometimes, mm-hmm. and that's when she, she's trying to evolve the system. Yeah, you know? but she said that she lets the the people who are actually bad get taken yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "What?" And she's like, "Well, I don't arrest people who are just, you know, doing something. I only arrest bad people." Bad people. And he's like, "Wait, what? <laughs> you don't just arrest everyone breaking laws?" <laughs> oh, then when he like does that spell on her while he's the tongue the tongue licking yes. spell, I was Ooh. like, mm. "Okay." Let's just explain set, it. Let's set just, the scenes, Johnny. Set, set the scene. The scene okay. For him. Like, okay, so Ian, he's going down on her, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you just think, like, okay, it's a standard going down scene. Yeah. But then he mutters some words and shit, and he's just like, hey, you good with this? And she's like, 
kind of like skeptical, but she's like, okay, look, okay, that's what's gonna happen. Then he gets like two mouths. Mm-hmm. So one mouth stays on on her clit, yep. and then he goes up to kiss her. Yep. And so now he's making out with her with yep. one mouth, and one mouth is just going to town, yeah. downtown. Yeah. And that shit was hot. Yeah. I was like, wait, where's the spell? What's what? What are Shani, we? It's called a threesome. What do we? Say? It's called a threesome. <laughs> You just choose two gentlemen, and one of them kisses you while the other one is going down on you. This is what it's called. Bridget, I need this in my life. Threesome, asparagus, smuggadagadus. Make, yeah, make these some fools, magic. Make these fools appear. Make them replicate. Make two of them. And let them all have tongue rings. Let me tell you right now, Bridget, I don't know about the cock ring. I haven't done a cock ring, I don't think. Um <laughs> I feel like you would know. I'm mad that I don't know after reading this book, but I feel like you would know. I I, I don't think I've done a cock ring. I know people who've had them, but I don't Do you, think they have. Wait, <laughs> does your par- sorry? Does your partner have a tongue ring? My tar- my partner does have a tongue ring. I thought he had a lip ring or something. He had a lip. He has a lip ring. He has a tongue ring. Oh, okay. He's got like ten ear. I guess piercings. I've never seen his tongue. Why would he have stuck his tongue out at me? <laughs> I think he used to have nibble piercings, but that was before I met him, um, or whatever. And I think a cock ring was attempted at some point. Unsuccessfully. Ugh. Ooh, uh, I just got the chills. <laughs> Only if you're a vampire should be getting cock rings. It feels very painful well, if you're not. <laughs> I can't imagine, just in general, I can't imagine that a cock ring is going to be good because it gets caught. Things get caught. I had a belly piercing at a certain point and I couldn't do things. Couldn't go on a slip and slide. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't wear <laughs> And my vagina is a slip and slide. You know How are they going to go in there? <laughs> like, like to me, there's just some things where you don't want things catching. Do yeah, you know, well, also you have to probably be really careful about cleaning it, not getting yes. it snagged on. You can't things. have pubic hair. You're gonna have to make sure all your pubic hair is not not oh, hanging around okay. there because that's that can also get caught. Sure. And it's not gonna feel good. No, you don't want something jerking on your penis no, if it ain't don't. a mouth. No, you, unless it's a mouth. <laughs> you, don't you, don't mouth. you don't want none. You don't want none. Hand that. or mouth. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I can't imagine that it would be. Plus, I feel like you'd have to be so like you couldn't. I well, okay, maybe this is not true, but in my mind, you couldn't just randomly hook up with someone without a little bit of because like let's say i went home with the dude yeah and he whips out a dick with a cock ring and i'd be mm-hmm. like we need to have a debrief <laughs> <laughs> prior to that coming inside of my body in mm-hmm. any way like how you know like even something and as simple it mess as like with the condom yeah yeah even something as simple as like giving a hand job like yeah. he would have to tell you how to do it so that yeah. you didn't accidentally like yeah. yank it or i'm with you because i feel like if a dude pulled his dick out and there was a <laughs> cock ring i would be like <laughs> okay hold up it's, uh, i'm not saying it's a no i'm not saying it's what a i'm no. what i'm saying right now was how's it work Education. does it hurt what, yeah. Like how do we put it in? Yeah, it would definitely crush the vibe. Does for it need a hot to be slow? The, my curiosity would have would take oh, over. Yeah, so, yeah. And they'd be like, "Ma'am, could you just leave?" Could yeah, you just- <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, "Whoa, I didn't know I was answering twenty questions." I'd be like, "What you should have given me was a, a pin- fact sheet, a fact sheet <laughs> in the bar mm-hmm. or at the club or at the friend's house yeah, or with, a, with a picture, but a, a picture, picture is underneath a little flap, and yes. then the flap says yes. dick pic inside. Yes, you know, or so- text me some sort of link where I can yeah. watch some videos and I can yeah. just ascertain whether it's for me or not yeah. for me." But yeah, I feel like that's not would a no. Be, it's not a no. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> I've made out with someone with a tongue ring, but I've never done anything else. Ooh. But I can imagine the tongue ring would be a boon. The Bridget. lip, the lip ring did not do it for. It. I thought I found the lip ring kind of annoying. No, the lip ring super annoying. My partner actually took out the lip ring because then you can't feel the, the all the good juiciness. Well, it just gets lips. in the way, and I didn't like the lip ring situation. Yeah. But but the tongue ring, the I can imagine ring, being Bridget, a real pressure. Let me tell you. Yeah, let me tell you that it's it, it's something like they use like flick on nice on play in places and yeah. on places and yeah. stuff. It's yeah. it, or when you're kissing mm-hmm. and you can just be playing with the tongue mm-hmm. ring and your tongues and shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is a great additive. Yeah. That yeah. one is worth it. That I can see. Mm-hmm. That yes. I can see. I've made out with someone and I can imagine those sensations on my body. On your body. On my body. Yeah. Which if I they know how wished. to use it and flick it around and do all those crazy yeah. things. I mean, if you get a tongue ring, PSA. Learn how to use Learn, it. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, what's the, what's what's the, the point? point? What's the point? I did know someone <laughs> once who used to like suck it out their teeth so it was like in front of their teeth yeah and i did not like that <laughs> i thought that that was very i was like oh this if we hung out more would be very annoying for me but also you you have to be kind of like they have to clean it so people can have in tongue rings for so long that the tongue ring gets like plaque 
I've seen this. Yeah. I've seen this I a few times. I can understand that. I have to take it out, clean it, or get a new one every so often because, like, right. nobody wants to be kissing you with your dirty tongue ring. Right. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> Second PSA of the episode. <laughs> Tongue rings and cock rings, you guys. So this is what this whole episode's going to be about. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So basically, she's a bad bitch. However, yes. she does need saving a little bit more than I would prefer. Mm-hmm. Uh, for someone who is such a bad bitch, yeah. she needed to be saved quite a few times. Well, but there were some times that she needed to be saved, right? Where later on she had a power that could have fixed, fixed it earlier yep. on. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was well. She did say that she tried not to ever use her powers because she was trying to hide who she was, and yeah. because that like side of her when it takes over, quote unquote, it like I didn't like that she like leashed herself back at the end. Yeah. Okay. So let me set the scene. So yeah. her dad's the Grim Reaper. She's got all these dope Grim Reaper powers. However, mm-hmm. it comes with a certain detachment of emotion. Yeah. Um, and she's always talked about how her dad like doesn't really love her or, like, take care of her the way a dad would, but he feels some sort of responsibility for her, but isn't warm or, you know, doesn't hug her and, like, nothing. And the the human slash now human has become vampire side of her, obviously, mourns that fact. And her dad and her sire told her she always has to keep, or her dad threw her sire, I guess. But her sire told her she has to keep that side of herself leashed so that it doesn't get out and, like, A, so that no one knows what she is. Because they don't, you know, even in the supernatural realm, they don't like things that are mixed. And also because it'll, like, quote, unquote, take over and be too detached. So she does let it out when Ian gets captured by Dagon at the end of their fight. Which at first I was like, they killed him so fast. I was like, what a letdown. And then I was like, this better be a trick. There's too much of this book left. Uh, it was a trick by him. Yeah, I, um, I thought that too. I was like. Yeah. Anyway, so they fight him for a long, 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 long time. Yeah. They're doing all kinds of crazy magic. Both of them are almost dead. And then she's like, oh, you killed my what? And then she just like lets the leashes go and just yeah. starts fucking killing yeah. all these demons like a badass. That That is one of my, uh, one of my quotes. Oh, actually. let's hear it. So like she lets let's go. He's not prepared for her to let go, and she's just basically myrtleizing him. Uh, and there's a certain point where she has like beaten him up so much, um, and she says, uh, "I don't know how many extra souls you have in you to burn through before you stay dead, but I'm going to find out." Yeah, I was like, "Yes, yeah, she and I was is. like, get him, oh shit, get him, get him, oh shit, this, yeah. is, this is about to go down." Yeah, you know, uh, so yeah. She she unleashed on him and then like but she was like, you know her all her glory all her power but she was definitely like in a deity form at that point where she's disconnected right. from uh, like loving Ian or remembering yeah. him as much yeah and so and she was saying at a certain point that she didn't want the other side of her to come back because she'd be crippled by like the love and the feeling and the emotion or whatever right. um, but I did like that they drew a parallel for her when. Um, with her, with the Grim Reaper, like Daddy. dad, yeah. you know, because later on when she's trying to logic with him, she's like, "Oh, I remember that when I was in my God state, essentially, yeah. I would only, I could only hear like lo- very logical, right? Kind like of- he already betrayed you. He was trying to kill me, and he's yeah. like, he betrayed me. me? He's yeah. collecting souls. souls? Oh, yeah. about to snatch him. He, so nothing she could do emotionally to like, right. You know, to plead her but case dad, was I gonna, love Ian. yeah, was gonna go through. So she had to make very logical, yeah, um, arguments. I which I actually liked her thing talking about unleashing. Yeah. Um, because I think I've said this to you before, but like, like I'm Shawnee, but I also have cave Shawnee, right? Mm-hmm. And I always say there's cave Shawnee. She's in, she's, uh, she's in this cave. I leave her there. You don't want her to come out. I throw her meat every so often and that's how she stays. Right. And it's basically like, if you, I am the nicest person you'll ever meet at all, almost all times. If you take me to a point where I got to bring her out, I cannot, I can't be responsible for the outcome because I only bring her out when I need to shut down situations hard and fast. So it's like your worst nightmare <laughs> that you'll ever meet. Your worst your nightmare. Your worst fucking Come nightmare. Come to a cinema near you, <laughs> near- <laughs> Cave Shawnee. Anytime anybody's- That bitch will shut shit will shut- down. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, anytime anybody's ever met her, they're like, oh, I get it now. 
<laughs> like so my cousin said to me one time, she's like, people told me about this side of you, which she was being a dick, but people told me about this side of you, but I never saw it before. I was like, well, you've seen it now. Yeah. If you'd like her to come back, you'll stay in my face right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen Cape Shawnee, no. you guys, unsurprisingly. You never will. I never will. You never Unless will. we're around someone else. And Cape Shawnee comes yes. up with them. If I have to I fight to, for somebody. I get to witness. Yeah. Or like what, it's like somebody tried to do some shit when I had my cousin's baby. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is, just, this is just not going down. That was a, that was a crazy day. But like, it's just, so I liked when she was talking about the unleashing, you know. Yeah. Like when I was younger, I used to fight really dirty. Like when I would, when people would piss me off and shit. That was, that's the Cape Shawnee I put away. The one who's yeah. like, looked at your your biggest oh weakness. Oh my God, the flaws. And, and just, and just stabbed you, it. Just yeah. bam. I mean, yeah. I think I always tell people like being an empath is like a blessing and a curse, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you get the to ability know. Ability to eviscerate someone. You can eviscerate somebody or you can yeah. lift them up. There's, right. You get a choice. Choose your path. Yeah. <laughs> you know? My cousin always talked about that. She was like, she's like, it's so easy to break someone. Yeah. It's just like, I have to work hard not to do it because like, because she's brilliant and she was like, she's like, I could just tell and she's like, so creative with her words and the and she could just talk so fast and just be so cruel. She's not a cruel person though. She's no. a very nice person. But like when it's a she, gift. but when she yeah. gets on, it's like, oh shit's going down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you better watch her. And and it's and it's such an evisceration that you don't ever want to go there because you can't take back you can't take it back whatever happens. I don't there. ever let myself get to that point. Yeah. I probably have Cape Bridget, but I just I just don't. I bet ever. you have Cape Bridget. I do, but I just don't ever go there. Yeah, I for the most part am much more even as a human being, even tempered, even keeled, even yeah. even. I'm just like more even. Yeah, I have highs. I, also, and, I have highs and lows, obviously, like everyone. I also think you have better uh, boundaries with like outside people, like. I try really hard. Yeah. I try really hard. I did not used to be good at it. And that is like always when like shit would get crazy. Is like when you're just like not I'm respecting your own immediate urge, like, ah <laughs> yeah. like that ah, I don't know if I you know, and you're especially when I first moved here, I had yeah. a, a bunch of situations that just didn't end up great. And, you know, L.A. entertainment is sort of notorious for having very selfish people and very backstabby people and stuff. But, um, you know, when you come here, you just, like, want to work. And yeah. so you accept everything because you're poor. I was poor. Poor shit. Poor <laughs> shit. You come here poor shit. You come here poor shit. <laughs> and I was, you know, just wanted to work. Like, yeah. I just wanted to come here and work. And I did. But also that means if you're accepting every job, then not all of them are going to be good. Yeah. And I had a couple that went real sour because I was like, yeah, I'll take the job. Even though I was like, ooh, I probably shouldn't. But I was like, fuck it. I need the money. And the connection's good. And it'll help get me to the next thing, which were all true. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that there wasn't some shitasticness yeah. on the way. You know what I find really funny is that there's like a lot of, um, dear listeners, we live in L.A., we work in I, production yes. and all that stuff. Um, I find that I've worked a lot of like these low budget things, especially when I first got yeah. to LA and people were really not nice. Yeah. And I thought you can't have a low budget project and not be nice. No. Like uh, you, you have know, no money. You need to be nice as fuck. Yeah, you need to be you nice good as fuck. snacks. Always have good snacks. Yes. Feed your crew yeah. no matter you what. Always got to feed people. You know what I mean? And then like, don't be a dick. No. They're and don't, for, for don't fuck with people's also, time. Don't fuck with their people, money. Like, have some creative uh, leeway. Yeah. Because, like, I shot a short film. You can find it. It's called It Follows 2, slowly. <laughs> it's the sequel to It Follows 2. Or it's the sequel to It Follows. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. That's on YouTube. It's fucking yeah. hysterical. But I wrote that and made it with my friends. And, like, our DP who came on, he was just a friend that we, sh- like, who was our DP on paid shit at own. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I'll come play with you for a day. So he came out for the day. And, you know, he brought his friend who helped light it. Like, we brought a friend who was a sound designer. And then Julie had some actor friends who were beautiful who could be in it with us. And we used the house I was living in. That's, like, my now fiancé's house or that he was renting with some friends. And they, like, watched TV in the back and played yeah. video games. And I was like, everyone needs to be quiet as fuck for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> and um, it turned out great. But, like, a bunch – like, basically anything that is the look of it. Yeah. Um, I would say there's like probably four or five shots in there that I was like, it has to look like this to match the movie and everything else. He was like, Oh, what if I do this? What if I do this? Like the scene where we're in the park, 
Like he was like, oh, I want to use a really long lens and shoot across the park and blah, blah, blah. I've always wanted to do that. And I was like, fuck yeah, bro. It looks good. Do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah. That's your thing. That's not my thing. That's your thing. I was like, I will tell you if I get the performances I want and you do your thing. Yeah. And we did that for everyone. Like the sound designer was like, oh, I want to get this cool Foley and all this cool stuff. And we we're yeah. like, yeah, grab whatever you want, dude. Just your, the actors were like, oh, can I try this line? Can I try this? That's the best. Whatever. And I was like, yeah, go play. Like, we already got what we need. We have five, we have literally five minutes before you have to drive to a new location. Um, we have five minutes. Do your thing. Do five you. minutes. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but it turned out great. Yeah. It follows two. It follows Slowly. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I just watched it actually not that long. But it's like, have you seen it? I was like, shit, I was supposed to watch this. So I just watched it. It's really it's funny. funny. <laughs> it's really funny. Especially if you've seen the first movie. Yeah. I did not. It's not quite as funny if you haven't seen it. I had to go look up like a synopsis of the actual movie because you know I don't watch movies. Yeah, yeah. Now I watch more movies now because of you. Yeah, you'll be like, Shani, watch that movie or watch this movie or you gotta watch this. Yeah. So like, and I watch them with you. You want to watch that with me? No, and we watch movies together. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Yeah. and we watch movies together. Yeah, we just watched a movie with our patron. We watched after. I'm and really, we're about to watch After Collided, but we can't watch it with our patrons because it's only on video on demand. So me and Johnny are just going to watch it by ourselves. But yeah. it was so fun. Thank you so much for coming on, Danielle. We love you. Love you. Good times. If you guys want to be a patron and watch movies with us and just do fun things with us and get all these behind the scenes and the things Shawnee cuts out and extra goodies from our interviews, that is the place to be. Absolutely. Patreon. Patreon. Dot com. Go there. Forward slash. Forward slash. Romance at a glance. Yes. You cannot search for us. No. Nope. Because we are explicit. explicit. We are. I like when you say explicitly awesome. Explicitly <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you have to type in patreon.com forward slash romance at a glance or head to our website. There are links all over our website for Patreon. Woo-hoo. Good plug, Bridge. Thank you. I felt good about it. I felt good about it. I felt very smooth, smooth. until you called it out, and now it's feeling like it's an advertisement, <laughs> which it is kind of for giving us money to make this podcast so that Give we can pay money. for all of our hostings, hosting, editing, editing, all the all things. the shit. You guys, all the things. But you get a lot in return, and yes. you can do it for you know as much or as little as you want. Absolutely. And you get to be our friends, even closer friends. You get to watch movies with us. Yes, because we like DM you and message yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, we like hang out, it's hang good. out. Good time. I want to quickly talk about how immediately after she gets hammered, yeah, they go save this blood slave, which mm-hmm. is like a fluffy blue winged, or I don't know, demon. If it's blue. It's like a fluffy winged demon dog demon thing dog. that has no gender yeah. or genitalia, and they save it. And it's like one of those things that like bonds to whoever is like its master, so it like bonds to her. Yeah. Anyway, so they have – she, like, turns it into a little baby that she claims that they saved and are about to drop yeah. off because some of her law guardian peeps find them. And this is so awkward. And they have to lie so hard to try and get out of this. And they're like, yeah, well, what happened was we were at this <laughs> – like, this makes no – their First lie all, is so clearly a lie. Yes. And the law guardian who comes is her former lover – so awkward. Or maybe sometimes lover, I guess yeah. is a better word. Yeah. They, Who's clearly in love with her. Yeah. And she's not in love with the other lady. And yeah, she's just like, why would you be with him? She's so jelly. I'm like, you need to get off that nut, you sweetheart. Like, you need to calm down. And then they, they pretend they're like, oh, we're married. Yeah. And she's like, well, if you're married, then recite your the vows. Again. Which if you recite Take them move. again, basically... It, ju- it marries them because right. they have to do the blood, whole blood yeah. oath thing or whatever. Yeah. So then they end up like freezing time, doing the marriage situation. Oh, yeah, she can freeze time. Super yeah. cool power. Which I thought was cool. But again, freezing time, like, it's one of those superpowers where later on sometimes you're like, well, why didn't you just freeze time? Yeah. And they're like, oh, I was too tired to freeze time. Right. I'm like, come on, girl. You, yeah. you were like a god. Yeah. Like, let's stop playing yeah. games here. But anyways, they freeze time. Then they do the whole blood or they talk it out, actually. They fight it out. He's like, I don't want to marry you. She's yeah. like, look, we ain't got a choice. Yeah. And da, 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 whatever. Yeah, and they go back and forth. They're going to kill you right now. And kill right me too. Right <laughs> <laughs> You know, so then they unfreeze time. They do the whole marriage ceremony thing in front of her lover, who was very salty about the whole so situation. salty. And the thing is, if she had just been chill, they wouldn't have had to get married yep. in front of her. If she yep. had just been like, you know what? I'll accept your blatant lie. Yeah. Like, it was like a forced proximity outing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in public. But you can't leave. You can't leave. You know, she was very intense. And then they did turn the little demon dog 
yep. into like a baby. Yep. And they're like, oh, we'll drop it off at the fire station. She's like, no, it's going on. <laughs> You're so suspicious. Which, I mean, to be fair, that law lady was probably like, you guys are suspicious as fuck. This guy mm-hmm. is like a, a renowned Lothario. Yeah. And you are a renowned, like, shut in law guardian. Law guardian. <laughs> and you have nothing in common. You met five days ago. And it <laughs> doesn't make sense that you're married. Right. And I wanted to marry you. How come you didn't marry me if you're going to marry someone? <laughs> is basically what she was saying. She definitely said that. <laughs> and so, anyway, so he, like, basically is forced to marry her. She's forced to marry him. Yeah. And, and she's like, I won't hold you to the oath. Yeah. Or whatever. It'll just He's be like, I'll this. drop you off at the first orgy, you know, as soon as we're out of this. Like, yeah. I don't care. And he's just like, fine. But then one second later, someone says something mean to her, and he's like, that's my wife. Back that's my fuck up. <laughs> that's my wife. It's <laughs> principal. <laughs> that's principal. That's my wife. <laughs> You're insulting me if you insult her. <laughs> which, which I'm not mad at. Not I mad at. do love. I understand. I'm a big fan of the, like, that, that, uh, I don't know what you would call it. But that owner, I like ownership. Like, yeah. like for me, in in just like in my kinks, I love that feeling of like ownership. Now yeah. nobody's really telling each other what to do and that sort of thing. But it's yeah. like that's my girl, that's my boy, that's my you yeah. Know, I like that's my we've wife. talked that's about this my... on the podcast before. Yeah. I think it's so wonderful to read it and also just in real life to like oh we're on team us yeah y'all better back up back we can be mad at each other but we're on team us yes it's like when someone's mad at your sibling and like your, your sister's a bitch and you're like what? what you better take my sister's name but i'll kill you take, take her name out your mouth <laughs> i'll kill you i'll kill you but then you're like I'll burn this up. <laughs> but then but then afterwards then she, you're like yeah loki she don't bitch <laughs> yeah. then you get home she says one word to you and you're like fuck you, you? get the fuck out of my room <laughs> You're like, she called you a bitch and I defended you. And this is what I get. <laughs> it's like I always said, like, if I were to ever, like, get and married. And I love get- you. Hi. Sis. <laughs> <laughs> this is in our youth before we became friends. Now you guys are best friends. Um, no, like, I, I always say, like, if I, had a, if I had a partner and I got married, mm-hmm. like, and had kids, mm-hmm. I was like, it's us versus them. Like, it's me oh, and yeah. my partner versus the 100%. kids. Like, 100%. You know me and Leo are like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you, you know? can go ask dad, but he's going to say, didn't my mom say yes? I'm going to take so much pleasure and <laughs> just, like, t- teaming up. It is and nice. being like, And then singing, like, a chorus of no's. Like, they're like, yeah. oh, can I go to bed later in a bit? No, 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 no. It's no, 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 no. <laughs> good. No. Well, also, I can't even imagine parenting if you weren't on the same team. Yeah. Because it is hard enough. When a three year old is coming up with these fucking really convincing reasons why she should be doing something, and you're like, "Well, that's a great point. Still a no, but it's a great argument, great and argument. I appreciate the, that you are smart enough to make it." My answer is still no. A foot is still it's down. down, but like I can't even imagine. I mean, there's been a couple of times where our wires have gotten crossed, just like yeah. anyone. Like you didn't realize someone had already said no to a whatever popsicle or something yeah. like that, and or staying up ten minutes later, we never say yes to that. <laughs> Let's go back to this book. Okay, so, back to the book. So I had some issues with this book. However, yes, I don't know if I was in an emotional place. Tell me. I don't know, you know, if I was just feeling the feels. Tell me. And I knew it was coming. Okay. But when uh, Veritas is fighting Dagon yes. and um, um, he stabs Ian in the eye and then yes. he stabs him almost halfway through the other eye and he's like, look, you have to sell me, give me your right. soul or I'm going to kill him. Right. And then Ian just... Pushes himself all the way on the the mm-hmm. the said, bone dagger and kills loved you. himself. And he's like, I could have loved you. <laughs> I could have loved you. And then, bam, he kills himself yeah. on the dagger. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I was like, no. <laughs> and no. no. And also, uh, what a dick thing to say as, like, I could no. have loved you. Yeah. You didn't say I love I, you. Well, I do love you currently. You Motherfucker, know, you could? You're about to die. You bitch, bitch I gave you the best sex of your own life. <laughs> but Bridget. Your hundreds of years old. How dare you? How dare, dare you? I'm beautiful. I'm wonderful. I'm badass. How dare you? I would have been mad as hell. I would have been like, fuck you. I was mad as for her because I was like, you know she you're about to She thought it was beautiful. She, was, like, she didn't think you loved her at all. Yeah, or could feel that way. But, so, like for her, I think she was like, "Oh my god, he could have loved me." But I was like, "He should have loved you already. You were dope as hell." Bridget, Bridget, how? I, mean, I actually thought it was I so. Lost, you know, I would have lost my mind. I was, I lost my mind <laughs> in the, like, in the moment. What? He stayed dead. I'm just <laughs> you know like. What? I'm happy that they didn't say what he said at first. Yeah. It took her a while to figure it out. Yeah. Because at the time he garbled something, I'm like, oh, I'm assuming he says, like, I love you or whatever. Right. You know. Um, and then it's all so sad because then he kills himself for her. Right. So she doesn't sell his soul. And right. I was like, no. 
even yeah. though I knew that shit was coming. Sure. And then she's like, oh, I know what he said. I could have loved you. I was like, I could have. That is not a phrase you fight for. <laughs> that's, not, yeah. that's not a, like, that's not yeah. the moment. Yeah. The peace or resistance that's going to be. I mean, I think the I way just, it was written, I just banged my mic. It's like when the, somebody apologizes and they're like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've said that before. <laughs> sorry that you're upset. However... I'm not changing my not mind. Changing your mind. I uh, agree because I do think that she. I don't know how the it sounded with the narration, but I do think that it for her it meant oh we had a future. Mm-hmm. I thought I was just gonna like drop him in an orgy after this and never see him again, but like he could have loved me means like we could have been together. So like it was like she thought there was no future at all. Yeah. And then now it's like, oh, a but he was thinking a there was a, no, he was like thinking of a future with me. Yeah. Um, I personally don't love <laughs> in books when it feels like one of the characters really thinks there's no future. Yeah. Because it's harder for me to get invested if I'm like, well, you don't even think this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> or like you're not even feeling like hope that they might love you back or you're not even like i mean reading the fucking clear signs that he really likes you yeah or you know like the way he defended her against his friends and stuff and i'm like he clearly likes you get on board mentally with the fact he likes you but he he might not be married to you forever but he likes you but i but i also think that like so i mean i thought she was kind of keeping it realistic like we we got on a soapbox a while back you know and we were saying like look if a guy's not telling you if a guy tells you he only wants to have sex with you yeah. and that's what you guys are fuck buddies yeah don't don't make it into something it's not right until Except for he didn't do you know? that he was like i don't want to marry you but then but then he was like but you're now my wife and yeah. hey friends back off that's my wife you're talking about i will He's like, I will literally kill you right now. True, but he never corrected. He's like, he never yo, sire, said, I'm going to ditch you all. We're leaving together. Yeah, but she said multiple times. He sent times, his friends to bring her, to get her, Yeah, but she her. didn't know that until after sure he that already had bone daggers in he both went, his eyes and he, his soul had got sucked out like a soda. That's true. So <laughs> He did go do grave magic for her, though. He did. And also maybe to free himself. But yes. He but fucked the life out of her, Shani. Bridget. He fucked a building down around them. Bridget. It was like Spike and Buffy. <laughs> Did you ever watch Buffy? I'm only like in season two Ugh, still. Johnny. I'm look, I'm gonna finish. Johnny. I'm gonna finish it because I'm waiting for Spike and Buffy. And I was trying not to skip episodes just to watch that because the build up I think is probably part of The build up is, is part of it. Sure. Well watching also them. Angel and you're about to be at season two is when Angel and Buffy start to get real good. Oh yeah. Well they then, he, he already they already bro- broke the V card. Oh my god. Okay. So, so you're midway through season yeah. two. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my god, you did you see the episode yet where they switch bodies or the ghosts inhabit their bodies? <gasps> I don't know. Oh, it's a devastating. Episode. I don't know because it's been like it's been at least like six months since I actually okay. watched. I love it so much. Uh, okay, oh, first of all, but I might make you watch me probably favorite show of all time. I will 100 percent watch the rest of it with you. Don't you have the DVDs? Or yes, I do. And also, they're I think on Netflix now or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I love that it's in four three. Like yes, the, it the is. Aspect ratio. Hell yeah, it is. And I'm like, oh shit, this was on an old TV. Yeah, this is <laughs> a fucking old show. It was on like the a, 90s. <laughs> this is a 90s. It's almost damn near a square. It is a square, basically. It's great. <laughs> and then at one point it like switches like oh, at, during, in the DVDs it's like really old really old really old and then you're like oh okay we fit like 2002 Dude, hello yes. <laughs> welcome and I'm curious actually because like so like right now when I film like or a few years ago right everything was like film in 4k so you can future proof and now it's like film in 8k Ugh. so you can future proof so i'm curious if they actually filmed but have you ever or, needed really really needed it to be 4k no first of all i've never really needed it to be 8k or 6k i've shot no. in six and eight and the only thing it's good for Too is punching media. in getting yeah. getting tighter into but a like, shot just do a close-up but yes just it's reframe Move honestly your camera, people. it's like two extra hard drives of footage that i crazy. don't need yeah what am i gonna spend 250 dollars extra on just drives yeah. alone no. i'm but i feel like i have I'm a drive hoarder. Like, I have footage that, yeah. like, I'm just hoarding at this point. I have a bunch that I'm like, what am I going to do with what this? What am I going to do with this? Yeah. But I'm keeping it. But <laughs> I, I wonder to. if they actually aired it for three, but they actually future-proofed episodes past, like, a certain point. I don't. Uh, or whatnot. think so. Because this show, I mean, this show started in, like, 97 or That's 98. crazy. I feel old as shit. Yeah. When I, so, Dude, when Buffy came out, first of all, me and my sister were only allowed to watch one hour of television a week. So we would watch Buffy. And then when Angel came out, we were able to sell our parents on two hours because it was back to back and it was technically yeah. the same show, but it was like spinoff. Yeah. So then we got to watch two hours of television a week. 
And I love that show so much. We watched every single week. If, if like, a week got skipped because there was, like, a sporting event yeah. or, like, whatever, something is happening, we were like, no, what are we going to do? We'll watch the, re- I we'll watch the episode that's on again because it's not like at the time we had the DVDs. Yeah. Oh, I love that show. But anyways, back to my point about Buffy and Spike. Fuck. And first of all, you're going to like it because they do a lot of dark shit. But Ooh, yeah. they also – and also, she's like grown up by then. Yeah. By the time they're together, because yeah. obviously when Angel That's and her together, she's Buffy, young. like high school Buffy, is really lame. Like, like just her personality to me is like super like Valley about, Girl. Well, she's supposed to be. Yeah, like she, that's the whole point of her character is that she's she she's, before she, she becomes a Slayer, of, she is a ditzy blonde cheerleader. Yeah. She's basically she's like I would have been Cordelia. It reminds me of like Sailor Moon. I don't yeah, know if you watch it, but she's like a terrible superhero. Like in the beginning, like oh yeah, she's yeah. Just well, really she doesn't. Ditzy. She has to learn everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody's always saving her. Mm-hmm. She gets the credit because she hits the last, you know, like yeah. spike. But really, yeah. it's about the team. Oh, yeah. Buffy's all about the Scooby gang. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And Angel. 100%. Man, I, I mean, tall, I watch him in, uh, in Bones. Bones you He's know so what I mean? charming and laughs a lot. He, he aged well. He I really aged enjoyed really well. him. Yes. You know, and I'm sad that Bones no longer exists because I could have kept going. I could have kept going. Yes. When, Hodge- when he leans towards her. In seasons like one through six of Bones before yeah. they ever do their first kiss. Yeah. Or one through eight or whenever they do their first kiss. Yeah. And he like always is leaning really close and you're like, ah, 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 ah. It didn't yeah. happen again. And Hodgins and Angela, stop. Yeah. Stop. Haji's yeah. my favorite. He's my favorite till he got I know someone mopey. who went on a date with him in real life. Really? Yes. Was it good? No. Uh, they weren't a match. But okay. still very excited. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So anyways- in Buffy, yes, Spike and Buffy have sex in an old sort of abandoned house. Yeah. And they destroy the house while they're having sex. Like these people. Yes, they go through the floor. <laughs> they go, like, I mean, they, that is, it is exactly this. I think scene. you pulled it up on YouTube because I remember, I he, I see it in my face. So I think you were like, Shawnee, you must see this sex scene. I'm and pretty then you sure I it did. Up. Bridget Obviously. always treats me. I always got to treat I you. Mean, this season is for you. I feel super spoiled a lot of times because Bridget, I mean, she treats me better <laughs> than uh, most people in my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my dudes are not stepping up. You hear me, dudes? You're not stepping up. Bridget is out <laughs> shining, y'all. <laughs> oh, my God. She got Bridget. the dirty talk a lock. Let me tell you I right do. now. <laughs> I do. I know. I feel like I need to... What do I get out... Get a job just reading smutty books to people. I would. You can't. That's a thing. Okay, I, I can't really like right that. now. <laughs> All right, let's. But like in person, like just people lay down. Bring every. Bring your vibrators. Put a little. Maybe I'll put little bring curtains up. Or everybody just close your eyes. You got a pillow. You got a little mat. Your yoga mats. Whatever. Bring bring whatever toys you like. I'm just gonna read you a smutty okay, story. I think that would be really hard though if people brought toys if they made noise. I guess because that would be just too distracting for me. That'd be true. What if? Because I'd be like, what are they get over there? What if you all had headphones? Everybody had their own noise canceling headphones. That's it. And I'm, I'm it's like those parties right with the the, the, the the like clubs where you like wear your own headphones. Oh yeah, where you you have your own dance party yeah. in your in your. But like the DJ is doing it. Yeah. But like everyone's. I actually really like that, like especially because they're a little bit more social Because then when you take them off, you can say like. Hey, well, in a normal tone of voice, you can be like, "Hey, do you want to get a soda? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> do you want a shot? Sure." To me, it makes in a lot club, of sense. You're like, "I got anything to say." <laughs> well, you get to choose the noise volume. instead of trying to avoid noise. Yeah, you know, I'm always trying to bring decibels down. So every time I go to uh, something, I always have earplugs in and, and things like that. So, but everybody assumes that the default loud. state is loud and noisy. So yeah. I like the idea of the default state being quiet, and yeah. you can choose loud and noisy. Yeah, and you can control the own volume of your headphones. Exactly, because those DJs get too aggressive. They with get how loud very they aggressive, especially when they do those the sound that's like. And you're just like, it's like a high pitched thing that just makes you want to like, and then it's like, boom. And then the bass, you're just like, I'm, my rib cage is rattling so hard. If you're in front of the sub, oh my God. So I went to EDC. Did I ever tell you about that? No. Okay. I went to EDC, which is called the Electric Daisy Carnival. For those of you who don't like EDM music, it is the EDM festival of the United States. And it's in Las Vegas, out in the middle of the desert. It's three days, three nights. And it is like, I mean, basically 24 hours. Um, it starts at like 7 p.m. ends at 7 a.m. every day or something like that. Six to six. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's very fucking long. So I got free yeah. tickets because my little sister, what up, B? Her friend was working there. And she 
was like, oh, my friend's working there. You can go volunteer and get a free ticket. So her friend hooked me up with like a VIP badge for volunteering. So I volunteered for like a half day and then got to spend the rest of the weekend. My boyfriend at the time, who had just moved, I had just moved to LA a few months before this. And my boyfriend at the time was already going with one of my high school best friends and like their whole group of friends. And I was like, yo, I got this free ticket and I'm going to volunteer. Like, can I stay with you in your hotel room in the mornings when we're not partying, I guess? And he was like, yeah, sure, come. So I went. And to say that it was loud there when you were (laughs) by a stage is just like an understatement. Like, I was literally as far back from this one stage as you could get and still, like, be actively a part of that stage. Yeah. And I had a hand on my chest because my chest was rattling. And I was like, my heart might, like, arrhythmia. And I don't even, I don't do drugs, so I wasn't on any drugs. I wasn't even drinking because I was trying to just stay awake all night and dance and have fun. And That's why you do the drugs. You got. I should have probably done the drugs, you know, because everyone else was on the drugs. That's why they'd be on ecstasy so they can stay up. Dude, people on MDMA and ecstasy and shit, like, are fine while they're on it. Not fun the next day. No, they suck because because they they're, suck. They're they serotonin have leached the serotonin from them. them, and they are terrible oh, people. Yeah. It is horrible. Yes, and they can't wind down, and they nope. can't fall asleep, and like they were all music people, so they were like playing back the songs we had just like the videos of the night before. Yeah, in the hotel room, and I was yeah. like, crazy people. I'm trying to sleep, and then we went to a pool party during the day to do more dancing and drinking, well, and I was like. How are you people also awake? And so, I was like, oh, you're just on drugs. No, yeah, continuously. And then I realized, like, oh, I'm the only one not on drugs in yeah. Vegas right now. It was crazy though. But the my ribs were just, just I had had I had earplugs in, and we I was like, yo, my boyfriend's like, I want to get close. And I was like, bye, I'll see you back at the Ferris wheel in two <laughs> hours because I cannot go closer. So but I was at a VIP bench, so I could go anywhere I wanted, and they oh, were all good. super jelly. And I got to like go behind the so scenes. So what you just cool. described is Miami. <laughs> Oh my! But like on a like on a regular, yeah. like just on the reg, just on the regular. Yeah. So because there's no curfew, right? So yeah, so you clubs go to the until club, like six or seven. Yeah, you go. You don't even go to the club until midnight. Midnight, and then it's you like party until the sub. Because the, they're from South America, that's how they yeah, all did it. You in party until the sun comes up. Or Central America. Some places you you can even sleep there. And then you wake up like a few yep. hours later. You get a freaking mimosas and really? you keep partying. They have like a yeah. What do you mean they have like beds or something? There's or? sunrise parties. Yeah, there's clubs with beds. There's what? clubs. Yeah, and there's a lot of clubs that are like under underground clubs that okay. a whole lot of shit goes down. But imagine like people from Ibiza yes. come to these places to yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're equitable. <laughs> they're equitable with Europe. Yeah, like how they party in freaking Europe. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like everybody. I again, I didn't do any sort of drugs until I was 27 when I like smoked weed for the first time. Right. Yeah. So I was like this <laughs> little kid who was like, well, How's everybody staying up? Like, <laughs> I would fall asleep in the corner at clubs all the time. I didn't know I had fibroids at that time. So it was really, I just had no blood. But like, I, I would fall asleep. And I'm like, oh, is everybody just dancing until uh, all the yeah. way in the morning? And oh, we I would, would just, perform. I would just stay awake. Yeah. But Even we, with no drugs, I would just stay, I'd be still dancing. Cause I'm like one of those people who, like, if we're having fun, I'll just stay go. up. Go. I'll go. <laughs> yeah. I'll go till I. And then the second you put me down yeah. at home, after Gone. I have a snack, <laughs> I'm fucking out. But, but like, I was crazy. I used to go. I went to a club with the same boyfriend that same summer in LA, and yeah. we got home at I don't know whatever because we went to like an after thing. We got yeah. home at like a four or five, probably went to yeah. sleep, and I went to work at like seven. And he was like, where are you going? And I was like, I got to work, bro. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm fucking hustling. Oh. I was like, you got a real people job. I was like, I'm trying to hustle right now. I got to go. It's Sunday morning. I got work. And I went and worked like a full day and then went home and passed out. Yeah. And like, when I was in Chicago, we didn't party like in Miami. But like, me and my friends, because they don't have clubs like that. Yeah. All night. But me and my friends would go to the bars till the bars closed. And then we would go back to someone's house and drink until yeah. whatever, two, three, four, five in the morning. And then I would go to sleep. I would, or I would run home depending on where I was in the city. So I would drunk run home or I'd go to sleep for a couple hours on a friend's couch um, or in whatever man's bed I happened to be in. Yeah. And then I would run home the next morning or I would run to get my car depending on where my, there was a lot of running involved, yeah. run to get my car depending on where my car was. And then I would quick shower and then I would go coach soccer or work at a store all day on my feet. I'd be at like soccer games 45, 50 minutes from my house for an 8 a.m. soccer game. 
that's, that's, that I was coaching. That's beast mode. It's insane. That's I don't. I can't mode. do that. Well, I can do it now because I have children, so I just wake up even though I'm tired. But I, I just, just don't drink anymore yeah. as much. Well, like I, I think back to like the times where crazy. I'd be performing right, and we didn't even go on stage till three a.m. But that was prime time. Yeah, right? it's prime time. You know, and I remember distinctly in my crazy ass fucking outfits yeah. and huge high heels, like going down the stairs in the house with the the baby would. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she'd be awake because she didn't have no bedtime. She'd be, she was like two, yeah. and she would love to watch me walk out in my crazy, crazy costumes outfit. and and shit like that. That's and I'd so be fun. trying to sneak back in the house. I didn't have to sneak, but I was just trying to be yeah. quiet. Yeah, you know, at like six or seven yeah. or nine in the morning, and yeah. my friend would always pop her head out the door, and she'd be like, "I can, I see you," and I'd be like, "What the fuck?" But I don't know how I did that now. Like, yeah, looking back, you'd probably still like go to class. You'd yeah. still do your I, life during the day. Exactly. I went to class. Yeah. I went to work. I did yeah. whatever, and I don't know where I found that in energy. In South America, we you know? did that. We did that that life, you know, because like they don't eat dinner till midnight. Nope. So we went to dinner at. Sometimes we were American, so we'd be like, "Let's all go to dinner at ten. We'd be the only people in the fucking restaurant, (laughs) the only people in the club. So, but by the time everyone joined us, we were like fucking wasted. (laughs) But we would be there till you know. Well, when I moved, the sun comes up, then we'd go to the pool at the hotel hostel, and then we would watch the sun come up and drink while we were watching the sun come up, (laughs) and then we would take a cat nap for a few hours during the hottest part of the day. That's what you do. Wake back up. (laughs) Yeah, but that was our night sleep time. (laughs) (laughs) That was supposed to be. It's not like we would take a eight hour siesta in the middle of the day. We'd sleep for like three or four hours, and then we'd just wake back up and go again. It was insane. Wait, wait, let me tell you the best thing. So fun. The best thing that happened was when I moved to LA, right? Yeah. Because I moved with a lot, uh, a lot of people from Miami yeah and I remember going to a club for the first night not realizing there was a curfew so I got there at midnight yeah <laughs> the curfew the lights go up at 1 30 yeah and you're like right? what's happening so the lights it went a raid? Up. I thought it was a raid <laughs> I was like the police are here yeah. like what is happening and somebody's like no no the club is like closing yeah. and they have to be cleared out by two yeah so lights up and, yeah. and whatever last call and, and I out. remember the first day being like, son of a bitch, what the yeah. fuck? This is terrible. Yeah. And then very quickly coming to appreciate it because yeah. what I would do from that day on is I would go out to the club with people and when they turn the lights on, I would be like, what the fuck, man? You're ruining my party. But in my mind, I'm like, yes, yeah, I get to yeah, go to yeah, bed yeah, now. Yeah, Time yeah, to go yeah, home. Yeah, Good yeah. to get to go. <laughs> It was, like a, it was like a great excuse to be like, oh, man, it's not like Miami. Yeah. I, used to, I used to always say that like, Miami's so much better. There's, <laughs> there's no curfews. But really, in my head, I was like, yes, uh, I'm about to sleep. Okay, so back to the book. So I want to talk about Ian's friends. Yes. Because obviously, we did not read the prior book. So we don't know whether his friends are just dicks or whether this is like part of it or whether he was such a dick in the last books that they don't believe anything about him. Yeah. But I thought that they were unnecessarily dickish, even after he explained the situation. And even after it was very clear that he was defending her, mm-hmm. they just kept on going and being yeah. like, but I don't believe you. But I don't think that that's true. Yeah. But I don't believe that. And I was like, y'all need to shut the fuck up. Yeah. I was getting annoyed with them. And then the one guy was like, well, you know, I've never seen a woman be so, like, digmatized by whatever. This is one of my quotes. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, the guy says, I've never shagged someone into a state of witnesses before. And he's like, Ian's like, then I pity your wife. Ian snapped before I could give my own rude rejoinder. Up your bedroom game, Charles, before Denise finds someone who will. More importantly, his fangs came out as he snarled at the rest. The next person who insults her will get their mouth shoved up their own ass. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you better fucking snatch these people snatch down. Snatch them Slap up. these fools. Because. Like honestly, it went on for a long time. It did way too long, and I and totally And then they agree. followed him. Yeah. Even after they put he, like trackers, they put trackers on them and then followed him, not to like keep them safe because now they knew they're in danger. Which I was originally like, oh, maybe they're following them because they know something shady's going on and they're going to need help. Yeah. And he's helped them, but they went to just because they still didn't believe. Yeah. And I was like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> I did not like that. No, I, I'm with you. I think it took way too long. Yes. It annoyed me. Yes. Uh, um, and then I also, um, so like Veritas has that power. The 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 Veritas that's leashed, you know, or Ariel, which is her like, you know, given birth name. Right. Um, that's like that hidden name. and no, leashed. Like- you did or did not? I didn't like it. No, I didn't either. I, didn't like it. <laughs> I don't think she Ariel? liked I don't think she liked it either. Aww. There was a certain point where she was like, they named me after <laughs> I was like, it didn't seem to fit her so well. Especially because it was Ariel for the more Amazonian a version of Body her. type, yeah. I thought Veritas was actually Veritas was dope as hell. Yeah, that sh- should have been her like 
given name. That would have made more sense to me. Yeah. But anyway, she has that uh, other side of her that is like so hugely powerful. And then um, Ian's one of the is it his sire, Mish Mish Menchaus. Yeah, Men Menchaus. I don't remember. I don't remember how you say it. But anyways, he's there with the friends, right? right? And then he, um, they talk about earlier in the book how uh, he can. When he doesn't like somebody, he just basically snaps their head right, right. off in like seconds. Right? right. So there's a certain point where she's with the friends and she feels him like squeezing her neck. Right. And whatever. Like so like he's about to like snap her head right off. Right. And she doesn't bring out any sort Time, of alter ego. Yeah. She's like she's there like, oh my God, like I can feel him squeezing me. And I'm yeah. like, you have a whole beast in you. Yeah. Well, not even the beast part, but like you've been alive for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. Like how do you have no defense to this? Yeah, she well, she has all the witch powers too, yeah. which she could just do spells on him. So like, and it made no sense. This is the problem with magic. I this is my soapbox, and I'll get on it every time. When you write a book based on magic, where anybody can do magic at any time, it makes it really difficult to write a story in which somebody doesn't say, "Well, why didn't you just freeze time? Or why didn't you just use your powers?" Or right. why? So that's why I feel like magic should be based on alchemy. So you can't just do something out of nothing. Everything has to come from well, something. I agree. First of all, yes. That's just my I agree. I think the, in general, I think the rules are just what's important to me. Whatever rules you establish, I'm happy to just go along as long as yeah. the rules remain consistent. But if you have someone like her who can just do any kind, like earlier, she's fucking melding people together yeah. with her will and just waving at them and being like, Spaghetti jo- vampire. Join together. Join Spooky together. Spooky vampire. Smoosh. Yeah. It's like she just like fucking kills one because mm-hmm. she's just like disintegrates them because she's drunk and does yeah. it on accident. And he mentions, he's like, you don't need to mutter any words. You don't need to do, because obviously she has like God powers. Yeah. But it made no sense to me that she wouldn't because she didn't need to speak words. So it didn't matter. He was cutting off her air. Yeah. Whereas like if she was a real vampire, like he, Ian has to say words. Yeah. To do any magic. But she doesn't. she doesn't. And he wouldn't, and Min Chaus or whatever his name was, wouldn't have known that. Yeah. And so she could have just, or she could have fucking froze time. She could have done anything. It doesn't matter what she did. She could have, like. She had options. She had a lot of options. Yeah. And she did not exercise them. Yeah. And maybe you could have said, oh, because she didn't want to, like, piss off her friend who she's known, because she's known him for, you know, a thousand years or whatever, and they're yeah. friendly. And maybe she doesn't want to, like, hurt Ian's family. Okay, maybe. But. But if death is the other yeah. option. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. I would have froze time and been like, yo, Ian, you better snatch your family back. <laughs> I'm going to let them go. I want you to know. I'm going to take my earrings off. <laughs> I always like that that visual. I'm like, I'm going to take my earrings off now. Now shit's yeah, yeah. going down. <laughs> the earrings have come off. That was the best. So, I mean, that was one of the things where I was just like, you, especially when her full power comes out at the end. And yeah. I'm just like, wait a minute. You had this the whole time, like, okay. Yeah. You know. And honestly, I know, like, when they f- killed, like, the first Dagon that wasn't really the right uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Dagon or whatever. Yeah. Um, I know it was, like, lackluster, and we were like, okay, well, that was obviously not the right person. But I was actually kind of hoping that that it was. I don't know if I wanted the book to be over by then. Yeah. Or whatever. But I also was like, how refreshing is it that a fight scene... They just win. They just win. They just win. Because they planned Because well. they planned really well. That's and what I thought. They just win. I, was like, I thought it was too hard to kill him. Yeah. Well, he didn't even die at the end, which no, was a letdown. He didn't die, which... Honestly, I think he, did, he didn't die so they can do the next book. For sure. Or but well, they could have had a different villain. Yeah. Because she yeah. has to hunt down all she has these to go people. She hunt down all the anyway, people. Anyway, so he should have just been dead. Yeah. Because then she could have gone and hunt down. Yeah. I didn't like that he had to stay alive. I didn't either. Or whatever. And he just lost the souls and he got a couple of slaps on the wrist. I did like, however, how she had to bargain with her father. That was good scene. To, like, get Ian's, like, soul back. Yeah. I like that she's like, look, at the end she tries all these arguments, but the one that really seals the deal is she's like, you were a deadbeat dad. <laughs> it's like an argument. You, you, you let these fools sh- kidnap me and, and rape me, me and, and over and over me and, and do and this. Over. Yeah. You know? Let me kill, kill me every day. Yeah. And, and then, then it was a little bit sad, too, because yeah. she throws all of this at him, basically. Like, you yeah. fucked up. Yeah. And then after he does, he, he actually brings Ian back and he gives her what he wants. And he's like, okay, now we're even yeah. he says to her like and by the way I every time you died 
I was the one who actually brought you back to life. You don't, you're not immortal. Yeah. I just kept bringing you back. Yeah. And I was like, oof, Ooh, way to. Slow blow dad. Way to. And I lost my position and I'm being kicked out of Grim Reaperhood. <laughs> yes. For doing this favor for you. Yeah. And now we're even. And it's even more fucked up when you realize that he couldn't get to her on earth. So he had to hire people. So every time he's bringing her back, he knows what's going on with her. Yeah. He had to hire somebody to go find her in the real world or whatever and to, to take her back from Dagon. So every time he brings her back, he knows she's going to suffer yeah. and he has to watch her suffering. So yeah. when, you look, when you look back on the scene, it's sad and all that, yeah, but it's also like, you ungrateful little... You ungrateful little... <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what? I hate that, though, when people... I, I agree with you. I thought it was very heart-wrenching. The only other thing I want to talk about is when he ties her up. Oh, yes. And he Let's asks her, that. do you want... Like, I want to tie you up. Are you okay with that? Because then we won't break anything. <laughs> <laughs> and circling back to the beginning, we won't break anything at this house. And it'll be really fun. And she's like... um, He's like, well, have you never had sex being tied up? And she's like, well, not like not on purpose. And yeah. he's like, oh, and realizes that she's been tied up and raped in her past. And he's like, me, I've had that too. I, but it could also be fun. Yeah. And so she's like, okay, I'm willing to try. He ties her up, leaves for like five minutes, and she starts like losing her mind. Not in like a panic over, uh, like a flashback to being raped, uh, which in her case was like a couple thousand years ago, but. Because the last, like, friend she... The only friend she had as, like, in her captivity betrayed her. Yeah. And so she betrayed her to Dagan, or Dagan, or whatever his name is. And so she thought, oh, he tied me up with, like, this magical something, and now he's going to go betray me. Yeah. And he comes back in. And I thought it was kind of unwarranted. I get panic as panic, but yeah. I was like... He's given you no indication that he wants to go anywhere. <laughs> um, excuse me. And um, and then they do fuck right after that. Yeah. Without well, being tied up. Yeah. Which I was nice that they didn't go back to try tying up again. It's like, oh, yeah. well, let's visit, revisit, revisit that later. That so I didn't think this was super far-fetched. I could definitely see where, like, you once you're tied up and you're like, well, this guy, he could have just been being nice to me. To get away, especially because that's kind of what they were doing to each other when they first started. Right. Like, making deals and whatever right. that they both knew had the potential of, like, using later to get away right. or manipulate the other person. So the fact that she kind of freaked out in those few minutes her brain got away from her. Yeah. I was like, I could see that happening. Um, I did like that. At first, he's kind of like, what the fuck, man? I wasn't going to betray you, you know? And he was yeah. kind of he was kind of hurt about it. But then she kind of explained a little bit more about it. He was like, I get it. And then they went on to have like a nice, they bonded, had an emotional moment, yeah. and then fucked off that emotional moment, which is always a good always place a good to fuck, place you know, to rebond. rebond. So, uh, so that's how I felt about that. Okay. I completely forgot that we ended on the cliffhanger and we only briefly talked about it. So... All the souls get out, blah, blah, blah. Dagan gets to go free. He's, like, weaker now, but gets to go free. She, Her dad is like, but you're responsible for all the evil souls that have been released, and you have to go find them and kill them all or yeah. hunt them all. And also Ian and is also, not going to remember you. Ian's not going to remember anything since he got branded. Yeah. Except for that Ian does remember her. Yep. Because... Love is the strongest emotion. <laughs> Love heals Love everything. Is the strongest emotion. You know what's funny? My ten-year-old uh, niece always says to me. She always like very sarcastically. She's very sarcastic. She's always like, "Oh, did love save the day again?" <laughs> <laughs> she reads. She reads so many books. And she's like, "Guess what the answer was? Love all along." <laughs> the, yeah. the craziest thing is, as an adult, I yeah. realize that the answer is actually love. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, wait, no, it, it does is. solve most It does things. kind of solve most things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and then she, like, makes this stupid decision. She's like, oh, well, he doesn't remember me, so I'm just going to bounce the fuck out of here. Yeah. Even though technically they're still married, yeah. to, you know, by Which vampire I laws. I thought was definitely a, like, But a, I was like, they shouldn't be married because he died and he came back, so it's yeah. like, feels like he should be a different person, maybe. I don't know. But she, like, bounces right out. She doesn't even, like, see if he's okay. He's, like, in the chopper getting blood bags, and she's, like, deuces. I'm yeah. out. And he wakes up and is, like, 
in a whorehouse and he's just like what is happening something's missing where is she and his best friend's like I didn't know if you she said you wouldn't remember and he's like who is she where is is she (laughs) (laughs) flipping tables over just like bring her to me she thought she could get away from me yeah she can't and then the grim reaper comes he's like I thought you weren't gonna remember but love is the strongest love is the strongest (laughs) you can find your killing and then he's like I'm gonna find her I'm gonna find Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. End a book, and I was like, "Yo, what? what? <laughs> like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? What? <laughs> uh, I was not expecting Hawaii. that to be. What no, happened? I thought they were just gonna like. He's not gonna remember her, and then they were gonna like fall back in love. Like he yeah. wasn't gonna remember, her and she's gonna be like, "Hey, Emberitas, let me catch you up." Yeah, and then he was gonna be like, "I don't believe it." His friends were gonna confirm it, and then he was gonna be like. I don't know you, but something about you feels right in my arms or some bullshit like that. Yeah. And then they were going to, like, f- fight all these demons together. Yeah. Why does she leave him behind to go fight all these demons? they like, this is your fucking fault, too. <laughs> get over here and fight these demons with me. <laughs> I would not have left that man. Yeah. I'd be like, he can cunnilingus while well, kissing my mouth. Cunnilingus. Cunnilingus. He can fuck me through a wall, and I like it. <laughs> I, yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a brief pause. Brief pause. Brief pause. Be right back. Hello, best friends. Thank you for being loyal listeners of Romance at a Glance. We're so happy to have you. If you'd like to support us further, head over to Patreon, where you can become one of our patrons. We've got a lot of great perks, such as merch and a super secret discussion group, where Bridget and I talk to you directly about all things romance and all things nasty. So come on over. And now, back to our show. So, Veritas... um, Okay. <laughs> I just really exposed your valley girl roots. Veritas. Veritas. <laughs> uh, if y'all didn't know, yes, I am from Miami. However, I did grow up in the Valley of Los Angeles first. Um, it's a dirty little secret until I was 13, and I talk like a valley girl. Had to break myself of that habit. But Veritas. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was very torn between a three and a four. Okay. Because I think I'm going to settle on a three. Okay. Just because I didn't feel like she unleashed when she could have. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like there was times where she was holding back. And I was like, yo, you could have just totally circumvented that whole bullshittery Mm -hmm. if you just pulled out your little bag of tricks. Mm -hmm. So I didn't like that about it. I also didn't like that she told all the secrets when she got drunk. Mm -hmm. And over, like, and how quickly I felt like all the walls are going down throughout the story. It didn't feel justified for the timing. Yeah. That's just kind of how I felt about it. Um, so I, I think I'm going to settle on the three for Veritas. I also gave her a three for all the same reasons. I feel like I liked her a lot at the beginning, and then I kind of liked her less as the book went on. Yeah. She had some shiny moments, obviously, throughout the book. But for the most part, I liked her less as the book went on than I did at the beginning. I agree with you. Now, wah, what, wah. what did you think of Eon? Master Eon. Oh, Vampire extraordinaire. So, obviously, the man can bow. Boop. Points in his favor. And I liked that he was a little bit complex, mm-hmm. which was nice. I liked that he claimed her, which was nice. Very nice. Um, I, but, like, something about, I mean, I gave him a four, but something about it just didn't. I don't know. I was in between a three and a four. And I was like, like, I never really loved him. Yeah. Like, I was never like, ooh, got to see what's happening. Ooh, got to see what's happening. <laughs> I was more just like, okay, well, they're doing this next. Yeah. They're doing this next. Actually, maybe I'll give him a three. Because I really don't like when people are like, I'm going to kill myself for you. And then he did say, I could have loved you. And I was like, fuck you, bro. <laughs> I could have loved you. I forgot about that. What you, a dick. You couldn't have given her what something, a, gone to the grave what a saying dick. I you love you. You know what? You. I gave him a three. That's all. <laughs> Three. I could have loved you. I just feel like this whole, I mean, spoiler, skipping to the end of my thing, but I just feel like this whole book was a three for me. Yeah. It's like it didn't, like, rile me up where I was like, ooh, because you guys know me. I will go read the rest yeah. of those books right that second and just be, like, eight books in by the time we record. And I haven't read any of the books, nor do I yeah. really have a super hangering to. Yeah. And, yeah. I only want to read the other books because... Now I started a story. Because you're like, where it happens. Yeah. I'm curious, but I'm also like, but, not that curious. But again, I, I could probably skim the next book just to see what happens. Yeah. And it's weird because everything in this book on paper yeah. sounds like a book I would love. That's why but, I picked it. 
Yeah. But then it just missed a lot of marks. Yeah. You know, and it was weird because I was like, I was like, am I the only, uh, I wasn't sure how you were going to feel about the book yeah. or whatever. And, I, but I was just like, I want to love this book. And I really. I just, wanted to love it. Yeah. And I felt like it was, it was and okay. And I thought it was a three. And I was huh. like, you know, it was, it's a solid book. Yeah. But there was like, uh, the banter really sold it. I didn't think that, oh, I gave him a three um, as well. Okay. Um, same thing. I actually didn't feel their chemistry. A lot, yeah. A lot in the book. I could see where a different set of characters, though, with her uh, very well-written dialogue, yeah, would work better. Like characters where one is supposed to be light and bubbly yeah. and fun, and the other one is supposed to be like maybe like the grumpy bear that she brings out of his shell or vice versa. So yeah. like something like that, I feel like I could see being well, fitting better. I wish that she was more uptight, Veritas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could have seen her be a little bit more uptight because he was so very cavalier yes. about everything. And he was always, even when like the ice thing happened and he's like, yeah, you know, bring that shit on. Yeah. You know, like um, that banter would have been better. But I think that. Like underneath, th- she was totally wild yes. and totally this yes. and totally everything. And she missed, she missed the ability to do that by letting yeah. the girl put her guard down so fast and spill yeah. all her ancient long secrets, yeah. you know, and yeah. like, the span of like yeah, and if you're doing a trilogy, anyways, like why even tell him shit in the first yeah. book? Why? It's like they could have. She could have been half fu- as vulnerable. She could have found out everything book. in the second book. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, uh yeah. So, anyways, I gave him a three. That's and- actually why. Now that you just said that, that I think I was so surprised this book didn't wrap up, and then the next book would be like friends of theirs or whatever. Yeah. It's because everything happened so fast. I was like, oh, because obviously we have to get to the end and there's a lot of world building slash action slash shit's going on. And then when it didn't end, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why did we rush through some of these things? We had a lot of time. We had a lot of time. That and makes complete sense. It does, I don't feel like there's enough story for a second book. So I was on the fence Not about this. Not That's why I'm like, kill that motherfucker and yeah. move on to a new story because with them. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, it's, are they going to fight the same bad guy and then a couple extra ones? And then the one thing about this book that like, I'm not sure that I liked was that it just moved from like action sequence to action yes. sequence to action sequence. And I think that's why I didn't get to feel their chemistry as much because they were always kind of in an aggressive state yeah. per se. And there were, weren't as many vulnerable moments to attach to. Or just like slow moments yeah. where they could just like sit around. Sit around and take time to like enjoy each other. Right. Um, and so like book number two to me, even though left at a cliffhanger that I'm like, okay, like I do want to know what happens to them. Do they find their love? I would prefer the second book just be a love story. Like no fighting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just the fighting. I don't think that's true. They're going to be fighting no, demons. No, they're going to be fighting demons, of course. But I kind of wish it was just more about their internal interaction yeah. with him finding her and then him not necessarily remembering all their moments, him just knowing that they're connected. Right. You know, but because he's like, He's missing a lot of memories. I think it allows for him to be a, a slightly would changed. Would you like the movie The Vow? Did you watch that with Channing Tatum and Rachel McAdams? You know McAdams? I don't watch a movie. <laughs> First of all, Bridget knows The whole plot of this movie <laughs> is that she gets in a car accident, loses yeah. her memory, and she doesn't remember her husband. Oh. And so the whole movie. So, but so it's a kind of like fifty first. She doesn't even <laughs> no, because she does. She can make new memories. She just okay. loses the three years. Oh, so she doesn't. All the last thing she remembers is being ma- engaged to someone else, and being living at, with her parents still, or in town with her parents, and li- and going to school for something that she's not going. Now she lives in the city. She's married to him. She's an artist. Yeah, and she doesn't remember any of that. And so he's like, "Well, you have to come home with me. You're my wife." And she's like, "I don't even know you." Yeah, and like the heartbreak on his face Oof. when she says that, Shawnee. Oh my god! Yeah. I actually feel like I would like to watch this. movie. It's really good. And then he has to, he basically has to like court her all over again and like show her why she loves him and like make her fall in love with him again. And also like show her who she was and how she like broke free of her family's expectations and like embraced how much she loved art and wanted to be in the city. And it Holy is- cow. Can you imagine all Ooh. the growth you've done in three years yes. having to regrow no. again? No. I Ugh. mean, good. If I woke up three oh, years ago, God. I'd have no children and not be pregnant. <laughs> Could you imagine? Or actually I would be about to give birth. I'd be pregnant. I'd be like, whoa, whose baby is this? Okay. Uh, I think Ian was a nasty. Yeah. Yeah. 
He, I mean, we broke out the two mouths, the two mouths situation. Yeah. I was like, uh, when he was like, "You can scratch me all you want. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Why are you holding? I'm back? gonna deny and deny until you let go, so I can make you come." And I was like, mm, 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 "That's some. Mm. That's some. That's a vampire after my own heart. After my own heart." Uh, I, yeah, he was I thought the sex was kinky. 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 Definitely kinky. Definitely kinky. Uh, in a nice way. I had a favorite review. It was from Anna. Bob's her hair in parentheses. Mm-hmm. She said it was three and a half stars. And it said that Ian was more than a swaggering hedonist in this novel. Janine Frost added an interesting layer. Veritas was well rounded, but her motivation for sinking a certain demon lacked something. Agreed. Or maybe I should just go with the flow and believe her passion for vengeance was burned bright for thousands of years. <laughs> it was obvious how her past shaped her character, but there seemed to be some emotional distance despite being told Veritas is feelings. Um, their relationship took unexpected turns. They had their moments. I wish their relationship didn't feel so rushed. The intimacy Ian and Veritas shared also felt forced. And, oh, you'll like the Shani. Veritas, a long gurney, blurting secrets while inebriated, didn't seem like it was in her character. Who knew it would be this easy to get her to spill secrets that would cost lives? If you're searching for a paranormal romance, then this is the book for you. If you're hoping for an edgy urban fantasy, then Shades of Wicked will fall short. Overall, this book was interesting. Or... Overall, this book was entertaining and somewhat on the light side. And I was like, summed up, summed up. That's my same review. So get the Bam. fuck out. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like we're on the same wavelength. It's so fucking Sometimes. weird. Sometimes I skip reviews because I'm like, I bet Chanel shoes. <laughs> See, that's the problem, though, because I skip reviews because I'm like, I think Bridget will choose okay. this one. And we then, we end, up, anymore. then we end up picking the same damn review. We'll just pick the first review. Like. <laughs> um, so, well, that's a review. But I did have one other quote. Tell me. Um, and <laughs> so this kind of summed up how I felt when she was, like, spewing all her secrets and stuff like that. But she said, at some point in the short amount of time we spent together, I started to care for Ian. That was supremely stupid of me, mm-hmm. but it was still true. And I was like, yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> stupid. It's too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> he should have earned that shit more. Yeah. Now, I, you can fall in lust with somebody. Sure. And that's what I felt like. Happened uh, at the beginning. Yeah, like, it, it happened at the beginning, but I felt like it could have carried on a little bit longer. Yeah. Bef- you know, of them just being like, yo, your body's hot. Like, yeah. I'm not going to tell you shit, but your body, like, yeah. we, could, we could bang. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, slowly creeped in. S- yeah. Yeah. I agree you with know. that. All right, well. If you're, you know, into paranormal with a lot of action and comedy mixed into the sexual tension, mm-hmm. uh, I think this book was a three. But I, I think, you know, I think you could enjoy it. I yeah. definitely think there are people probably who think it's a four or five star read, depending. I five think, stars is too much, probably. But I think, I think there's probably a lot of people who are like, this is a solid four stars. I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, I think if you read a lot of paranormal, this might not do it for you. But if you haven't read a lot of paranormal, this yeah. will because you won't kind of have read a lot of these same. Me, um, mechanics yeah, before. I fair. think because we've read so much, we're like, oh, okay, now this is going to happen. Now this is going to happen. Now this is going to happen. But it's worth it for the dialogue, I think. Solid three. Solid three. Solid three. Solid three. Yeah. All right, Johnny. All right. Until then, may your books be your lover and your hand your best friend. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our channel to get new episodes, clips, and more. And click here to watch our previous reviews and author interviews.